interactions with people are less than the recommended six feet of social distancing. You increase the number of people you interact with outside your immediate household. And when you spend greater than 15 minutes interacting with people outside your immediate household. Keep a mask, tissues, and hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol with you when you're venturing out. And try to avoid others who are not wearing cloth masks. Yes, I agree. Um, I think that definitely making sure that you keep your distance um, is paramount um, in situations when you have to go out and, and um, interact with other folks. Um, wearing the mask, keeping your distance, and practicing uh, hand hygiene all work in combination to keep us all safe. You can't have one without the other. How can you implement the hierarchy of controls to reduce the risk of COVID-19? The hierarchy of controls, if you are unfamiliar, is a control system that is in place to help employers um, and employees understand how to control their risk their occupational risk to safety and health hazards. So how do you have any strategies on how we can implement hierarchy of controls for COVID-19? Yes, it's, it's a complicated word, but not a complicated process. Conducting a hazard assessment of workplace can help identify potential workplace hazards related to COVID-19 and help eliminate them. And that's the point with the hierarchy of controls. Employers can use a combination of controls from the hierarchy of controls to limit the spread of COVID-19, which includes engineering controls, workplace administrative policies, and personal protective equipment to protect workers from the identified hazards. Examples of engineering controls for indoor environments include improved ventilation, modified worker alignments, visible markings to control foot traffic, increased spacing of staff and visitors, an increased number of hand washing stations and touch-free hand sanitizer stations, physical barriers between coworkers, visitors, and the public, and touch-free timekeeping and parcel tracking options. Engineering controls for vehicles include improved ventilation and touch-free parcel tracking and management. Examples of administrative controls include reducing the number of people in the building, conducting symptoms screening, implementing flexible sick leave policies, requiring the use of cloth masks, reducing staffing levels, cohorting staff members, staggering arrival and departure times, increasing cleaning and disinfection protocols, encouraging workers to stay at home when they are sick or exposed to someone who is sick, and conducting employee training and infection prevention. All very good topics. Um, and I appreciate you explaining and giving examples of what different levels in the hierarchy of control um, look like, starting with the most protective um, engineering and going to the least protective, which is, you know, some sort of personal protective equipment etc. So how can um, we ensure that our um, proper ventilation is um, considered in our workplace to kind of uh, reduce the risk and spread of COVID-19 in indoor environments? Right. Ventilation has been a focus lately. Having proper ventilation reduces the risk of spreading COVID-19 in indoor spaces. CDC has stated that indoor spaces where it might be harder to keep people apart and there's less ventilation are more risky than outdoor spaces. Indoor environments can include buildings and vehicles. The size and space of, and the number of people in it affect how much ventilation is needed. In general, it's better to have more space and fewer people. Ventilation environments and control vary through the transportation and warehousing industries. Truck drivers spend most of their hours in vehicles, and ventilation can be improved by using out the outside air feature on the vehicle instead of the recirculating air feature, and by opening a window to bring in outdoor air. Increasing ventilation is most important when drivers have other passengers in their vehicles. Warehousing and distribution workers mainly operate inside a warehouse, where the only ventilation may come from large overhead fans. To protect workers and customers from COVID-19, employers should consult with an HVAC professional to ensure the building's ventilation systems are operating correctly and consider taking additional steps to improve the overall ventilation of the indoor space. 
Some of these steps can include increasing the percentage of outdoor air through the HVAC system or using natural ventilation, such as opening windows or bay doors, and making sure that air does not flow from one individual to another. Employers should also consider improving air filtration to the highest level possible design for your HVAC system. Finally, make certain high traffic areas have additional ventilation. If increasing ventilation is not possible, limit the number of people in the building, room, or vehicle. Right, exactly. I definitely agree with the, uh, the comment you made. <laughs> More space and fewer people if that is possible. And then also making sure that the workplace has uh, more outside air coming into the to the vehicle and or the facility that always helps. Um, and I know there's been talk about in increasing uh, filters in the HVAC systems to MERV 13 or higher. Um, our HEPA filters is possible, if possible. I know not all systems can accommodate that, but definitely getting that outside fresh air moving throughout the vehicle or the system is definitely important. Um, even with our team drivers, having outside air come in that vehicle will be very helpful. Okay, so how can you reduce your risk of getting or spreading COVID-19 through cohorting? What is cohorting? Yes, cohorting, it's, a, it's another strange word. It's an important strategy. Cohorting forms groups of employees that stay together from one shift to another. This will reduce the number of coworkers your employees regularly interact with, which reduces the risks of getting and spreading COVID-19. Cohorting can be applied in the warehousing and distribution centers to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and can be applied to team truck drivers who drive together. Okay, so it's basically who you work with, you stay with that group of people, and that way it can kind of limit if some one person was to be affected, then it would be limited to that one group, or uh, potentially <laughs> limited to that one group of folks. Okay, that makes sense. Um, how can you reduce the spread of COVID-19 through social distancing? Yes, social distancing, it's also been called physical distancing, is maintaining at least six feet of space between yourself and others. Limiting close face-to-face -face contact with others is one of the best ways to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Make sure employees can maintain at least six feet of distance while performing their tasks, during break times, while punching in and out, at screening points, and in office or meeting room areas. Social distancing should be also maintained for truck drivers or parcel delivery drivers when at loading docks, in rest areas, truck stops, dining establishments, delivery locations, and while around coworkers or the public. Social distancing should be practiced in combination with other everyday preventative actions while at work to reduce the spread of COVID-19, including wearing a cloth mask, avoiding touching your face with unwashed hands, and frequently washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Many workplaces are instituting face mask policy, policies for all employees at work. Now, you mentioned um, face uh, mask face coverings, cloth face mask. Um, how do face masks um, reduce the spread of COVID-19? Yes, um, CDC recommends wearing cloth masks in public settings where people are close together. Cloth masks may help people who may have the virus and not know it from spreading it to others. Warehousing and distribution employers should strongly encourage employees to wear masks while at work. Trucking and parcelly de parcel delivery employers should encourage employees to wear cloth masks when at loading docks, rest areas, truck stops, dining establishments, delivery locations, and while around coworkers or the public, especially in high-risk areas. Employees should remember to carry an extra cloth mask in case their mask becomes wet or dirty. So in summary, um, we've covered a lot of topics today. The risks of, and protective measures against COVID-19 are different depend, depending on where you are in the transportation industry. Once employers and employees understand the COVID-19 risk levels, there are many protective measures employers can use to stop the spread of COVID-19, including improving ventilation, instituting cohorting, limiting close contact, requiring the use of masks. If you have more questions, you can visit cdc.gov 
backslash coronavirus for more information or contact the CDC at 1-800-CDC-INFO. We thank you for your interest and commitment to keeping your employees safe and stopping the spread of the virus in our communities. We are into this together and together we can make a difference. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for joining us today on this episode and giving us those wonderful nuggets of information on how employers and employees can reduce the risk of spread um, and contraction of COVID-19. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Teamsters podcast. Join us next time for another episode from America's Strongest Union. And be sure to check out www.teamster.org regularly for updates.